to Soul Winning with Lakeisha, where you will learn how to share the gospel with ease, conquer objections, overcome fears, renew your hunger for the word, infusing boldness like never before. It's time for the wise to win souls with Lakeisha. Let's get into today's lesson, starting now. All right, you guys, welcome back to Soul Winning with Lakeisha. I'm your host, Lakeisha McKnight, and um, I'm hoping that you guys had a pleasant, pleasant week. I know that I have just really, of course, spending time with family and friends and, of course, getting some things in order business-wise, but I definitely want to welcome all of you back here again for yet another exciting episode here, educational episode, uh, and very, very, very soul-touching episode here in Spirit Enlightening episode. And so again, welcome all of you who have been connected to the Soul Winning Podcast show, just really trying to get you guys geared up and to be effective in sharing the gospel message. And for those of you who are new to the channel, I do want to welcome you or new to the podcast show. I do want to welcome you uh, here. And it's just been a pleasure and an honor being able to do this. I mean, there's so many ways to get involved and share the message. And what better way than doing so via, you know, via computer, via Internet and just really getting the message out there since so many of you guys are out there who are believers and who do want to improve your ability to share the gospel and to win souls, because that's what this podcast show is about. We are here to help you. Myself and my staff is here to help you in your endeavors to sharing the gospel effectively and winning souls for the kingdom. So again, welcome to the podcast show. If you're new and if you are not new and you've been following us, I want to encourage you to go to the website and listen in on some previous episodes that we've had uh, where we've actually completed a five-day course and information on that course is definitely on the site. If you go to the site, Soul Winning with Lakeisha, L-A-K-E-I-S-H-A dot com. So winning with Lakeisha dot com, you will see there on the right side, there's an opt-in area where you can access a activity guide that goes along with that five-day course. Uh, and it's divvied out uh, in a manner by which you all will be given the information in increments. What we're going to be doing pretty soon is making sure that you guys get the entire guide at one time. So again, just go ahead to that area, opt in, and you'll get access to that guide. Uh, And I just want to again welcome you. And what we've been doing, actually the last show, we've talked about some an important topic as it pertains to some hindrances right? We talked about hindrances before, but we also talk about prerequisites, some things that need to take place before you can actually go out and seek to share the gospel. And so I want to encourage you to go back to our previous or the last episode where we've talked about some important information there. But today, we're going to talk about yet another prerequisite uh, that needs to take place, something, some action that needs to take place before you can effectively go out and share the gospel. But before we do that, it's important, very important, that we stop and give thanks and welcome God in that he can give us understanding and and, and really applying the word, knowing the word, applying it, and then being able to share it because that's what we're here to do. So let's go before God. And so, Father, we thank you right now for the opportunity to come before you, to spend time in your word, to learn how to share the gospel effectively. God, we thank you for getting us yet through this day. No matter what we've gone through, God, you've gotten us through this day. You're allowing us to hear the message right here. You're allowing us to dive into your word, to get greater understanding. And so, Father, we do ask also, also, Father, that you would forgive us of our sins, Lord, and that you would cleanse our hearts and cleanse our minds of all unrighteousness in the name of the Lord. And so, Father God, we just pray right now, God, that your will be done in this moment, that by your spirit, you would guide and direct us in understanding the word of God, giving those listening and even myself as I go forth, understanding in the word, wisdom, and how we can rightly divide the word of truth. Father God, may you bless our families and friends, and may you keep us and guide us every step of the way. Use us to share the gospel effectively and give us the words we ought to say when we have the opportunity to share of your word. And so, God, I pray right now for each person listening, God, that you would save that mother, that father, sister, or brother, that son, or that daughter, that 
is listening and those are a part of the households of those listening. That Father God, you, O oh God, would save their entire households. Let your will be done in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so right now, I want to encourage you to get your Bibles out. Get your handy dandy Bibles out, okay? And right now, I'm actually going back to the New King James Version. That New King James Version of the Bible. And we're going to be really focusing on a central text here. Many of you are familiar with this text. And it's actually coming from the Gospel of Matthew. And we're going to be doing some comparisons. It's very good to see how each gospel writer has actually written certain texts. So we may flip back and forth through the different gospel versions just to get, of course, better clarity and understanding about what it's actually saying. But then also making it relevant to what we need to be doing in our lives today. Okay, so. Let us dive into Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to we're going to start at let's see. Let's let's start at verse 25. Start at verse 25 and we're going to end at verse 34. So Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. That's what we're going to read, and it's going to be really our central text as we, go, if we, as we dive in. So let us go forth and read. And this is Jesus talking to uh, the disciples, uh, the group, the crowd that is formed to hear him uh, share the word. All right. So it says, therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look, look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes, the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? 31. Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all things, all these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So let us focus in on verse 33. I'll reread that again. But seek first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Now, of course, I read the earlier or the, the, the previous verses so we can get an understanding of what it's actually saying here in context. So what it's saying here in context, Jesus talking to the people here, you know, and specifically these Jews, right? Because he's saying, you know, after these things, the Gentiles seek. So obviously he has to be talking to the Jews, right? Okay. So he's saying, okay, well, don't worry about what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat, or what you're going to drink. You know, there's no need to worry about these things because the Gentiles, they worry about these things. Now, the Gentiles in context, of course, are those who are non-Jews. But applying that today or would be those people who are outside of the will of God or those who would be considered sinners, right? 
So he's saying, I mean, for people in the world, they worry about these things. They worry about what they're going to eat, what they're going to drink, you know, but don't worry about this because your heavenly father knows that you need these things. And our father knows, God knows that we have need of things on a daily basis. So we shouldn't worry about these things. But what he's saying, though, we need to focus on is seeking the kingdom first. So with the title today, of course, of this lesson is having the right priorities. The prerequisite or a prerequisite to really going out and effectively sharing the gospel is making sure your priorities are in order. You know, what are you doing on a day by day basis to make sure that you're spending time in the word and spending time with in prayer and, and doing kingdom things? You know, to things that's going to build up your spirit, man. Things that are going to help you to really focus in on things of the kingdom. What are you doing that takes away your priority or takes away your focus and causes you to shift your priorities? And we have to be careful because if we don't seek the kingdom first on a day-by-day -day basis, we're going to find ourselves sucked into the system or the pattern of the world which means that we'll be going into the same things and doing the same things, speaking the same way, thinking the same way that the people of the world think. And you have to remember that when God called you out of sin, he called you out of that worldly system. Um, although we're in the world, we're not of the world. We're not of the world anymore, meaning that our spirit has been reborn. We're of, we have the, we have the same spirit of God that dwell, who dwells in us. So therefore, we cannot do the same things as the people of the world does, but we have to do and have a kingdom mindset and having the right priorities, seeking the kingdom of God first. So when you're thinking about that, we have to intentionally seek first. We have to do the seeking, which means, as I stated before, every day putting this as a priority, making sure that kingdom things, not necessarily church things, there's a difference. Kingdom things, putting those things first, making sure our priority is straight. And first, it says seeking the kingdom of God. So when understanding the kingdom of God, and I know many of you have heard this phrase being used so more, so much more uh, lately over the course of the last year or year and a half, or even a little longer than that, uh, because of getting some clarity now within the body of Christ of what Jesus' central message was, which is bringing the kingdom into the earth, right? The kingdom of God. But we have to understand that the kingdom of God is God's domain, his way of doing things, his method of doing things, the culture of heaven being brought down into the earth. So that's what Jesus did. This whole new way of doing things and living is what he's introducing to the earth. And he's trying to draw people out of this worldly uh, demonic system and out of that system and bringing them into the system of heaven. OK, that's essentially what is going on here. And what Jesus is reminding these people to do, the Jews to do, is that you have to seek, intentionally seek. You have to put forth effort, which means that there are going to be distractions. OK, even, you know, the enemy would try to use people who are closest to us to distract us. You know, he can use the enemy can possibly use, you know, a wife or a husband can possibly use a son or a daughter. But you must intentionally seek the kingdom of God first. You have to recognize his, the enemy's tactics, but then also get back in order and say, okay, well, I recognize what this is, but then understand I want to, you want to keep things in order and stay in order and do what you need to do as far as your focus. So you shift your thinking. You have to call it for what it is. Whatever the distraction is, recognize it. And, uh, and call it for what it is. To say, enemy or devil, you know, I understand your tactic. I recognize it. But guess what? It's not going to have me. I'm going to overcome this. I'm going to continue to do what it is I need to do today. I'm not going to let that be a distraction. I'm going to get into my word. I'm going to intentionally seek God's kingdom. And I'm not going to let you uh, it, take me out of his will. So therefore, you do what you need to do. You cast down any type of plot or scheme that the enemy tries to put up in your way, and you keep it moving because you have the authority. You have God's word that you can speak and, and that you can cast. Of course, all the enemy's thoughts, his little 
uh, schemes, his plots, whatever it is that he's trying to plant in your mind or plant or put in your way as far as a distraction, you cast it down. Any type of trap he tries to set for you, understand that you will have a way of escape out of it. Because God will not put too much on you that you cannot bear. He will always plan a way of escape. But you have to have, you have to be in tune and alignment with God so that you can get discernment as to what that escape is. Because if you're not, you're really not going to recognize that way of escape. But with prioritizing back with that, you have to intentionally seek the kingdom of God first. And he also says, and his righteousness, Mm, his right way of doing things. You can have a way in which you do things, right? And does it mean that, of course, what it is you think may be positive, but is it a God thing? Is it really what he wants you to do? So there's a difference. There's a difference between something being positive, but what God wants you to do. Something being productive versus what God wants you to do. So there may be a few things we want to do in ways in which we want to do it, but is it in God's will? Is it in, in alignment with the purpose and the will of God as written in the word of God? Because righteousness is being in right standing with God, meaning that uh, you haven't transgressed his law, broken his law, his commandments. And of course, a part of his commandment is in going forth and reading the word of God and praying and doing those things that we need to do. Okay. So these are some things you need to keep in mind, staying in his will, you know, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he continued to say that all these things shall be added to you, the things that you need, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to wear. He will provide those things for you, or at least he will show you the way in which you can obtain these things. So that's what he's essentially saying. And that's what we have to keep in mind when we're going forth and we're, seeking to win souls and to continue to build the kingdom of God here in the earth is we have to keep in mind that there are going to be distractions that the enemy tries to put up in our way. And sometimes even those we establish ourselves, those distractions that we need to recognize as distractions and put them away so that we can focus in on the things we need to focus on first. And then those other positive things that you want to do, you'll be able to take care of. And even God may even give you insight on whether you need to continue with some of those things or whether it's just time wasters. So as you seek his kingdom, he'll let you know the things that you need to focus on. And you'll be able to effectively share the gospel with your mom, with your dad, with your sister, brother, colleagues, friends, all of those that you've been seeking to to win for the kingdom of God, or at least share the gospel with, so they can make it a a decision to allow Jesus to be their Lord and a savior, because that's what essentially we want them to do. And we would love for them to do is make that decision. So even today, you know, you may find yourself um, having several distractions, you know, distracted by a relationship you're involved in or working too hard where you're bringing all of your work home and you're not spending time in the word of God and in prayer. You know, you really have to call it for what it is and realize, hey, look, I got to make time for your sp- You have to make time for your spiritual nourishment, staying in the word and staying um, before God in prayer and doing those things that are essential. And then making sure that you you can go back and see what extra time you have to doing those positive things that you enjoy doing. Because understand that, you know, you have to make sure everything that you do is in alignment with the word of God and in his will. And as you pray to understand what's in his will, when you're in prayer and when you're reading the word of God, you'll understand when something is not in his will. Okay. It's, it can be clearly written in the word of God or, you know, he'll give you the sermon to know, hey, listen, you shouldn't be doing that. You know, he won't give you peace about it. You won't have that peace in, 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 in your mind and peace in your heart about that. So he'll definitely know when it's not in his will for you to do a certain thing. So, you know, the only way to know that is if you're walking with God and and you're staying in and having a daily walk, a daily relationship with the Lord, that's when you'll get an understanding as to what is in his will for you to do or not to do. So keep that in mind, even as you're going forth each and every day, is that we have to intentionally seek the kingdom of God first. So seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, being in right standing with him and his word. And, you know, being in right standing, of course, 
even with the way that he does things, seeking to understand that first so you can walk in kingdom ways, kingdom thinking, kingdom speaking. It's all about the kingdom. That's the message that Jesus brought. And that's what we need to essentially focus in on. So I hope that this message has helped you. I'm not going to, of course, ramble on and on and on, but I wanted to get you to understand that it's important that we seek the kingdom of God first. But if you want to go and look at some of the other versions, you can definitely visit Luke chapter 11, verse 34 through 36. And then there's also verses 22 to 34 of chapter 12 of Luke. So in the book of Luke, really, that's where you're going to get that, uh, that other version where you can get more clarity and understanding of this, this text. And, you know, definitely flip there and you'll get some insight more so about it because Luke definitely gives you another perspective. But I do want to thank each and every one of you who've come today to listen in. And I want to, of course, give you a word of prayer as we depart and go our ways for yet another week. So if you mind bowing your heads. So thank you, Father, for allowing us to come together yet again in different places of the world, listening to the same message, whether live or listening into it, of course, at another time. But thank you for bringing us together, even to understand more of your word. Help us to rightly divide the word of truth. Help us to seek the kingdom of God first and your righteousness so that those things that we need, that you can add them to us. And so, Father, we thank you for understanding that we are a part. We are part of the, that, that family. We, are, we, have, we are, are part of the family of faith, meaning that we are part of and inherit the promises that you made even to Abraham. We receive the blessings of Abraham because we believe and we have faith. And I thank you for including us as a part. Thank you so much. And so, Father, bless each person listening now, and may you bless their households, and may you keep us as we come, come together again, even within another week. Bless them as they go their way. Thank you so much in advance, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So I just thank you so much once again. Visit soulwinningwithlakeisha.com so that you can listen to previous episodes. We'll be back here next week with yet another prerequisite, right? So that we can share the gospel effectively and win souls to build the kingdom. God bless each and every one of you. Take care. You have listened to Soul Winning with Lakeisha. Connect with Lakeisha at soulwinningwithlakeisha.com for additional resources, exercises for lesson reviews, and so much more. Feel free to sow a financial seed to help Lakeisha in this mission of helping believers share the word. Be sure to come back next week for another lesson here on Soul Winning.